probably Rhaegar. Ned left the battlefield after Rhaegar had died and Robert was seriously injured. For a while, Robert was too weak to do anything so John Aaron was left in charge. Knowing that Aaron was an honorable man, the one who had taught Ned about honor, I presume he took care of Rhaegar's body and gave him a proper Targaryen funeral. As far as I remember George Martin mentioned in some interview that Rhaegar's body was cremated. Also knowing Robert's madness and Lyanna's love for Rhaegar, I suppose it's possible that Ned took Rhaegar's ashes from Aaron and buried them with Lyanna in Winterfell. Ned always remembered to decorate Lyanna's statue with a crown of blue roses, a symbol of Rhaegar's love for Lyanna and their marriage. Naturally, Ned learned about the marriage from Lyanna and Willa in the Tower of Joy, Ashera told Ned the rest when he came to Starfall to return Dawn. Hello everyone, if you are new here, please don't forget to subscribe and click the notifications bell, so you don't miss any new updates on your favorite TV series. The theory that there is Rhaegar's harp buried in Winterfell is fun but it's a bit silly. It wasn't necessary to hide the harp, everyone knew who was with Lyanna in the Tower of Joy. I think that the harp is just a part of Rhaegar's image, a reminder that he had a song. It's also the reference to the Prince of Wales coat of arms, the Prince of Wales is the title given to the British heir to the throne. The harp is the national instrument of Wales, the Prince of Wales is also the official harpist. Clearly, it was George Martin's inspiration for the Prince of Dragonstone, the heir to the Iron Throne and the harpist. The proof of Rhaegar's and Lyanna's marriage is in the Citadel. Aegon, Jaqeen, has already found it. In the prologue to A Feast for Crows Pate stole the key that opens all doors from Archmaester Walgrave's strongbox. The box contained Rhaegar's silver gauntlet, a symbol of the offer of marriage and the bag of silver, among other things. Pate took the key, a symbol of release from the marriage vows and the bag of silver, a symbol of wealth, of something precious. Leo Tyrell makes a joke also in the prologue, the Sphinx has stolen off with all his silver, Leo talks about all Eris and his money but the true Sphinx is Aegon, Jaqeen, and his silver, his wealth is Arya. Aegon will run off with Arya like Rhaegar ran off with Lyanna. Aegon took Pate's place, his room and his duties. By the time Sam arrived in the Citadel Aegon has learned all the secrets of Archmaester's strongbox. I suppose that the lie that led to the rebellion will surface in the winds of winter. Aegon will learn about the others from Sam. He will eventually come to the north with the proof of marriage in John's true parentage but John will be already dead, at least his human form will be dead. The two Stark siblings who died during the rebellion received their statues. Ned always said that Winterfell belonged to Brandon, that he was the oldest son, born to rule. Ned also had nightmares about Lyanna, in his dreams her statue wept with blood. Similarly, John had nightmares about Gilly after he had sent her to Old Town, in John's dream Gilly wept with blood. Ned blamed himself for angering Lyanna when she told him she wouldn't marry Robert. John was afraid he had sent Gilly to death instead of saving her. Lyanna died, Gilly will probably die too. The statue was Ned's way to give his apologies to Lyanna, to express his love and regret. He wanted to honor Brandon, the true heir to Winterfell, to honor Lyanna, Lady of Stark, a wife of the prince or the king and perhaps to also honor her husband, John's father. That's one meaning and the other is a hint at John's, King's blood, sacrifice and death. Thanks for watching, please don't forget to like this video and drop comments. And most importantly don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything.